This is a short episode, another duck cleaning short episode. I'm going to talk with Zach about fogging or sanitizing ducks. Does that even work? But before we do that, I want to thank our great sponsors. Carrier and Carrier.com. Don't miss the absolutely essential event in ACHR, the AHR Expo 2025, coming to Orlando, February 10th through 12th. Explore the latest product advancements, best practices, and industry trends. And I'll be there, of course. Register now for free at ahrexpo.com. Refrigeration Technologies at refrigtech.com. The ESCO Institute, with over 200 HVACR training solutions, courses, webinars, and simulators. Find out more by going to escogroup.org. All right, Zach is back on the HVAC School Podcast. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you again. It's almost like we were just talking. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird how this works. So this is going to be a short episode, and this is a common one. I've actually gotten this question a lot, and really, I have no idea what you're going to say, which makes it more enjoyable for me because it's this sense of suspense. And that question is about fogging duct systems. And the question is, should you fog? Are there situations where fogging makes sense? So NADCA has a white paper on chemical applications in duct systems. And I recommend anyone in the industry to read that and especially read it before they start saying they're going to sanitize your duct system yeah. or whatever vocab they're going to use. My position on adding chemicals to a duct system is as a last resort and other than fiberglass coating. Like that's the one exception for me. And that's because I think that is better for end outcome than having fiberglass blowing all over the air. Do not fog internal liner or ductboard. If your system has internal liner ductboard and you fog it, you may have just given it the substrate for mold to grow. And there are a lot of people who can say, ah, oh, they said they'd fog my system for 50 bucks and it'd be a good thing. It's like, you spent 50 bucks to create a multi-thousand dollar issue now. So that part of that technician competency and experience and really understanding you have to read the application label of those products and it's always on hard, non-porous surfaces. So the only suitable duct surfaces for fogging are going to be flexible ducts and sheet metal interior that's externally wrapped. So half the systems, no. Half of them, for me, it's as a last resort. I honestly don't even use my fogger at all. I don't know how you could completely coat the entire interior of a duct system to get the efficacy of fogging chemicals to work as the instructions say. I look at it more as a feel good, smell good gimmick. Placebo effect. I mean, yeah, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I don't fog almost at all. If you have confirmed mold between floors in your flex lines or something, you get a Brian Jones spec built home. Just to not throw a real name out there, but <laughs> you have flex ducts between your floors and can't quite guarantee you got all the mold out. Maybe in that application, there's risk and there's reward of applying those chemicals because people can have adverse reactions to the chemicals. And does that risk outweigh the potential that maybe it prevents an issue for some short amount of time? And then that's sticky as a residue inside the duct. So I have used the wiffle ball with rags and ran them through the ducts and then put dry rags back through with the wiffle ball. So there's like a wiffle ball attachment to these fiberglass rods that if the ducts get really gross on the inside, they're between floors and it would be more cost prohibitive to cut into the drywall and replace them because it's going to be a lot faster for me and cheaper to actually just replace a branch in an attic or a crawl space than to try to do that. But it might not be cheaper to cut into the sheetrock between floors. I have used the chemicals in ducts, but it's my last resort. Other people may feel different about it. But I don't think the risk is worth the reward without a very clear cause of what you're trying to, why are you fogging the perceived sanitation or any of that? You're creating an oily film for the dust to adhere to. Yeah. So even because a lot of people say, well, it's not going to create food in and of itself. Well, maybe not. But like you said, you're leaving behind a residue that now new things can cling to. 
And that's something to think about. One of the best ways that I would equate this for people who are used to this, everybody knows how I talk about line flushes for line sets and how I've tried different line flushes, but ultimately the ones that go in liquid and come out liquid make the most sense to me because I actually see stuff come out the end. Like this is how simple-minded I am. I'm pretty simple. When I spray something in that ends up vaporizing and then nothing comes out the end, I don't feel like I just cleaned anything. I'm pretty sure that I just left a bunch of residue on the inside. Whereas if I put a liquid in and it comes out and it takes stuff with it, and then I chase it with a pig that then squeegees all of that at the inside of the copper, well, now I feel good about it. That makes sense because I'm actually cleaning something. Like I'm physically cleaning it and I watch the soil or dirty oil or carbon or whatever come out the other end. So whenever you're just spraying something into something and you see nothing come out the other side and it's just supposed to kill what's in there, you still are leaving something behind. I mean, you have to be. In order for it to do anything, you have to be. And if you're leaving something behind, it's likely a residue that stuff's going to cling to. So there are really cool videos by, they're called Lauren Cook is the, I guess, fan manufacturer, but they show, visualize how air moves in ducts. And the way that fog is typically applied is that they leave the vacuum on on like really low suction to draw negligible negative air in the direction of the vacuum. But how much of that fog, if you're misting it in there, is going to actually coat the actual surface of a flex duct for the branches that it's going into? Or metal, but you're going to really have to drench it. And then it's going to be like dripping wet inside the duct. And... I have never seen a company after fogging go through and put some dry rags through. Or it's like, oh, just leave it in there. And it's, I know that it's sticky on my fingers when I get the chemicals on it. And I have to go wash them off with water. So for me, it's a no. Without a specific cause of why, it might make sense. If you're at a point in the duck that there's just, this person's a mold-sensitive individual, they're not chemical-sensitive, and they have insisted on it, and we have seen mold with our boroscope camera or whatever. You've seen what appears. What like, appears so it could to be, yeah. be mold. As yes. it could be mold. And they have a industrial hygienist lab report that they've shown me <laughs> saying, oh, I got this concentration. <laughs> it is mold. Yeah. It is suspect microbial growth without a test. Yeah. Thank you for <laughs> yeah, clarifying. Every time we're saying mold, we actually mean suspect yeah. microbial growth without a test. Or we mean one that yeah. we've actually seen a lab report on, of course. And I've been called into homes after they had the lab report that says, hey, we have these elevated concentrations, aspergillus, cladosporium, whatever. And at that point, I don't call things mold in the field. But there are a lot of people who think they look at ducks and they look at vents and they think that must be mold growing on them. Or you got dust on the end of the low friction point or at the end of the low velocity point where all the dust accumulates. And then it started sweating when you left your doors open. <laughs> Right. And that actually is true. I mean, this is a complete yeah. side note, but yeah, it is true. You can't always know. No. Final thing I want to mention, though, is that when we talk about fogging here, we're not talking about aeroseal because some people are going to think, oh, aeroseal is some of a totally different application, totally different situation. Yeah. Aeroseal is pressurizing the duct and spraying a, like a glue sealant inside of it. And I am familiar with that as well, from my previous work. But fogging, we're talking about spraying an antimicrobial, spraying sanitizer, whatever. I don't recommend it. I certainly don't recommend spending money on it unless there's a very specific underlying cause that maybe you are a mold sensitive individual that your body is telling you that there's stuff in there and a cleaning alone where they can't see it all the way. They can't guarantee all the way. It's like a redundancy. We try to get it between the floors and get all the way. I don't know because I can't snake a camera down through that. 90 degree vent boot going into the floor two front attack on it i guess all right thanks yeah all right that's it for this one thanks for listening we'll talk to you next time on the hvac school podcast